Lucia. Lucia is a holiday celebrated on December the 13th, as well as the name of the saint that is celebrated, or rather venerated, on the holiday. In Sweden, Lucia is included together with the advent of Christ in the preparations for the Christmas celebration. The Swedish Lucia procession is a mixture of several traditions, most of which are folk tradition, and some are from outside elements, taken from both older church tradition and from foreign traditions incorporated into Lucia. Possibly there is also pre-Christian elements in the traditions associated with Lucia, though these are harder to pinpoint, and that will not be the subject of this video. Pagan traditions or not, the main reason for celebration is that December the 13th is the name day of Lucia in the old Roman saint's calendar. Saint Lucia is after all venerated in both the western and eastern Roman churches and is said to have lived in Sicily around the year 300 AD. The young Christian virgin Lucia was martyred during the persecution by the Roman Emperor Diocletian and she is depicted in Christian art with a sword or dagger and a fruit wound. She can also be depicted holding two eyes on a platter, which refers to the legend that before her death she tore out her eyes and sent them to her befrowed. However, the mother of God, Virgin Mary, or God himself, gave her a pair of new and even more beautiful eyes as compensation for this act. As attributes, she also has a palm branch and an oil lamp or a candle in her hand. Keep this symbolism in mind because it will come back later. In any case, the Lucia celebration in Sweden is a continuation of this very old Christian saint worship. Despite Lutheran Protestantism being against saint worship generally, the celebration continued in Sweden uninterrupted and saints have more or less become an integrated part of the Swedish Protestant faith. It is also an example of celebration where female action and sainthood take center stage, as Lucia represents the light. In fact, the name Lucia comes from the Latin word lux, which means light, and it means more or less the female light source. And with regard to light, on December the 13th, Saint Lucia has been celebrated in both the Western and Eastern Christianity since the Middle Ages on the darkest day of the year, namely the winter solstice according to the Julian calendar. Since switching to the Gregorian calendar, which for Sweden happened in the 18th century, the winter solstice falls on December the 21st, which is today Mass of Thomas Day. But the Lucia festival remains on the same date on the 13th of December, so it was a bit moved in real time, but remained upon the same date in both the calendars. As for the Swedish traditions regarding the celebration of Lucia, Lucia actually begins on the night before with the Lucevaka or Lucia Vigil, where you are supposed to stay up during the night to prepare for the Lucia procession. There exists a lot of local folk tradition and Christian mythical traditions associated with this vigil, such as fasting, living frugally during the period before, doing various Christian rituals, doing rituals and prayers for rewarding of evil spirits and entities and the like. Next year I might even describe this in more detail. But there are a lot of preparations before Lucia proper. But the most common tradition associated with the Lucevaka is the baking of Lucicatter, which is a type of sweet bread with saffron, an extremely expensive spice in the past and still today to a certain extent, and with raisins what some people liken to the torn out eyes of Lucia. They are really tasty! And these are prepared during the Lucevaka before Lucia and consumed or given as gifts to the poor during Lucia. But now let us move on to Lucia proper and the procession of Lucia. Thus we will have to speak about the famous procession trains of Lucia. These occur usually in the morning just as the sun is about to rise but can be at different times during the day of Lucia. And if they are not during the morning, then they occur during the night, as the sun is setting. In these, 
Lucia procession trains. Usually in the front of the Lucia procession you have the main Lucia maiden, clad in white clothing symbolizing innocence and purity, with red waist or headbands symbolizing the wounds and the martyrdom of Saint Lucia. And the most famous of all, she wears the crown of light, symbolizing the light of the saint, as Lucia is associated with the light. A light standing out in the darkness of the world, against the evils of the world. Just like the evil of Diocletian had her martyred, but she stood for her faith. And the faith was the light against the tide of darkness, of oppression. After the main Lucia maiden, lesser Lucia procession girls or young women in similar white clothing walk after her, but usually they are without the crown or the red bands. But they do have a light in the hand, symbolizing the light of Lucia and the light of the faith in dark times. Behind the girls you have boys and young men also in white clothing and with long conical hats holding torches or staves with stars symbolizing light. These are often less focused upon during Lucia as Lucia is mainly about female faith and female goodness in the face of evil. Anyway, the entire procession will walk through either the village, church or other places of congregation, singing hymns to the saint and to other Christian characters. Actually, there exists an entire genre of songs associated with this. They are called Staffansvisor, though these are usually also sung on the second day of Christmas, and actually associated with uh, Saint Stephanus or Saint Stephen, usually. But they gave name to this entire genre about hymns to the saints and calling them all Staffansvisor. After the Lucia procession has walked around and sung all its Himes, praising Lucia and the other saints and the other Christian characters. There is usually offerings of drink, usually in the form of the Swedish drink glug, and giving of sweets and food, such as the famous Lussekat that I mentioned before. And these are usually given around as gifts or charity. But they are there to give hope, to give a light in the cool darkness of the world. This is a yearly celebration of hope during the darkest days in the year in the north and should not be mistaken for a KKK meeting <clears throat> or joked about being one as this is a very important feature of Swedish culture with a lot of emotional connection to the Swedish people do you are still free to do this though it would be exceedingly rude and speak about free speech you are free to comment on this video with whatever you like and ask any questions you would like. Also don't forget to give this video a like. Please do subscribe as it would help the channel spread awareness about the humanities.